So, all right. So, hi everyone. Happy New Year! And um, this is our very first call of the twenty twenty four the community meeting. So I'm pretty excited, and um, I'm pretty well. Other than the work and stuff and all the boring stuff that is going to happen this quarter, I'm just pretty excited for the new year because we all have resolutions that we are going to be the best person we can and then I think in one week I kind of like realized I have like self-realization that not anymore but at least for the first week I am happy and excited so and I and I hope you guys had an amazing holiday break and a fantastic new year and Christmas so with that let's kick off our Zeke community call and I'm gonna ask Johanna um, if we have any updates I know it's been the Christmas month, so we might not have very many updates, but just like to hear Johanna's voice would be awesome. So Johanna, go for it. We always have updates. I think since the last um, time that we had this meeting, um, the LT spent a little bit of time on finishing the uh, RACI matrix that we have been doing. So this is uh, the big matrix that we have been doing to try to figure out what entities exist in the project and who is responsible for what. It's not finished, finished, but we have a first and solid draft and current state, which we can use to work off. Um, one of the things that we um, noticed is um, that currently, um, so there is this thing that is called the seed team in the project, um, which um, is, I think, also listed on the web page. And nowadays, um, the role of this has become a little bit less well-defined. And we have started talking um, to the team about um, if we should make that the role of them a little bit clearer in the structure of the project. So that has been going on. And apart from that, we have been starting talking about events and we are um, trying to see if we can make Seek Week 2024 happen. Um, we don't really have news on that um, yet. We are working on it, but um, as soon as we know, we'll announce it to everyone. And I think that's the main things that the LT has been doing. If you're interested in the work of the LT, we post um, meeting notes on um, community.seek.org nowadays. So um, if you're interested in those, please read them, give us feedback. We're always happy to hear from people. And that's it. Awesome. Thanks, Johanna. And yeah, that's that's the updates we have from what has been going on with Zeek LT. Um, if you have, again, as Johanna mentioned, if you have any questions, please reach out to us and we would love, even if you don't have any questions, if you have a feedback, suggestion, we don't have a suggestion or comment box, but we do all hang out at on Slack channel and you can absolutely, and they're all pretty much the ones where we kind of like um, ignore all the criticism are public. The one on which we don't accept any criticism are private. So go back and give us the Rotten Tomatoes, whatever kind of rating you want. And yes, on the serious note, we look forward for any suggestions, comments, how we can improve. And if you guys follow the LT notes, you can leave feedback as well that whether they're helpful, does it have to be more granular? We try to be more um, open and transparent on what's been going on. But if you have any questions on the notes section as well, we are more than happy to answer those as well. So um, thanks, Johanna, again, for the update. Are there any questions for Johanna? OK, uh, taking that as no. So moving along our list of people to get updates from or to bug. Uh, Christian, you are up next. You want to say a few words? <laughs> Hey, Fatima. Happy New Year. I was just thinking that this is all referring to the future people again, right? Like, hello, Yushu. <laughs> um, I have not a whole lot today. Um, just um, a little bit, maybe. Let's see. So, yeah, um, 6.2 six um, development is progressing. We are planning to fork around the middle of next month. So there will probably be one more update where, you know, I sort of say the same thing. Um, you can track master to see what's going in. I think among the more 
noticeable things since the last call, if I remember correctly, is that we changed um, the naming and the types of some of the fields of the LDAP parser um, to, in our opinion, better reflect how the protocol actually manifests on the wire. <clears throat> and this is mainly removing um, plurality from fields like there, there are vectors and sets or were vectors and sets in those logs that are now basically singular items, which should be um, a little bit easier to handle and also reflect how the protocol actually works. Um, so for those of you who are doing LDAP analysis, maybe take a look, that'd be pretty handy. <clears throat> and other than that, let's see, there's been um, there's been a bit of a pattern lately on Slack where people come in with questions about spicy, which is first of all, great. Um, and uh, where people basically post uh, a whole bunch of files sort of to, 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 to show problems in their in their parsers and then ask us for help. And I would ask that you please don't do that uh, and instead point us at a repo where all these files are in because the, the, the fact that you're sharing these files should suggest that you could just point us at a repo instead because that makes it much easier for us to actually try out what you have there and see where you know a build blows up or why that parser might not be doing what you think you're doing um, and, and, and so forth. Um, so if you could do that, that'd be great. Um, and other than that, um, spicy is still pretty fresh. So thank you for, for kicking the tires on it, um, giving it a go and we're, we're happy to help. Um, yeah, I, I think that's all I had right now, much in progress and, and little concrete until that releases in the can. Back to you, Fatima. Awesome. Thanks Christian for the updates. Are there any questions for Christian specifically? All right. Um, if not, then we can move along. And I would like to ask Richard if there are any news or updates on the communication side of the project. Richard? Nothing right now. Uh, yeah. Keeping my eyes on the different channels we have. And uh, it is nice to see, like Christian mentioned, it is nice to see people posting questions and such in the channels. And so if we can sort of guide them to uh, better ways to share information with us, that would be good. And uh, I know Justin's on the call here and also Christian, uh, both you guys, I just wanted to say uh, you did a great job helping someone troubleshoot an issue with a, uh, a script that they had loading. And I think they had uh, like a missing character or an extra character at the end of the script. And uh, you were both very patient in helping that uh, person to get their script working. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's all. That's awesome. Um, thank you, Richard, for the um, updates slash comments. Uh, and uh, with that, I think the last person uh, to give the updates for this call is me on the uh, on behalf of this training subgroup. Uh, we have a lot of exciting ideas scanned for the rest of the year. And, um, and we do have meetings every other Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific time. I usually announce that, I mean, I used to announce that one, one hour before, but now I have improved. So that's like one of my resolutions. I now announce it one day before in advance on the Slack subgroup channel. Again, that's open to public. So if you want to hang out there, see what's going on. And I usually announce uh, our meeting call one day before. So if you just want to come and hang out there and see what we're discussing, and if you have any ideas, uh, just be present there and then we would we would love to hear more ideas from you right now all we um are kind of like planning to do for this year on the training side of the project uh is based on the comments and feedback that we got from our in-person training events that we have been doing and uh great comments am amazing feedback on the training content itself and we are just trying to make it more accessible and user friendly so if you come across something that is like terribly wrong with the training material content, the way we are presenting it, please give us feedback. That's really useful. And that can kind of like shape how we do these events in future. So we highly appreciate and we keep an eye out for feedback and suggestion, because again, we are doing this for you guys, for community. And uh, if it's not useful for you, then it's kind of like useless. So uh, with that, I think that's pretty much we had for this call. And once again, we you can reach out to us on slack channel there are other ways of connecting on our website so yeah uh, we will be looking forward to have more engagement with you guys for the rest of the year and looking forward for more interaction and the building up of user community uh with help of you guys so with that i wish you guys a very happy new year and then i'll i'll see you guys next month 
in our uh, next community call for Feb. So with that, I think we are all set, unless people have comments, suggestions, have to sh want to share some Christmas stories, New Year stories. I'm all ears. I always love a good anecdote of Christmas. So if you guys come across, please feel free to share the love. Oh, I don't know. Well, I guess it is kind of a, a Christmas present a bit. Uh, I don't know if people have been following along at some of the work done in master, but in some of the tests I've done, and I promised Arna I'd get like a post somewhere written for this, but master is like 15 to 25% faster than 6.1 due to a bunch of like little optimizations, I guess, that have all started to add up, you know, a couple of percent here, a couple of percent there, but it's it's dramatic like depending on what pcap i run it against you know 25 percent faster you know and you know just from the changes in the past you know two or three weeks so probably and and that's that's without even using things like zam which are on their own at times you know 20 percent faster so uh i know like a lot of projects over time, you know, things get bloated and slower, but we've done an amazing job over the last couple of years of not only adding more and more functionality, but just constantly getting more efficient, which is pretty nice to see. So you get you get more features and it runs faster, which is kind of rare. Thank you, Justin. Awesome pitch. It's also totally true. I could have mentioned that. That's true. And thank you to Arna, who is also on this call for a lot of that work. Oh, that's right. I didn't realize. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. Arna talk more about how exactly he's made it so much faster it's it's been a while since there's been such a dramatic change you know so it's it's pretty nice to see i, I think i actually just removed stuff we don't use exactly <laughs> <made> it faster. <laughs> but spotting that was the key bit so good stuff Wow, I, that's amazing news. I didn't know that. Um, usually we don't run master code in production because we always want to have a stable LTS release pushed out. But if master is faster and at least by 25%, then we should give it a try. So maybe I can pull DOP about, hey, by the way, we, we might want to run master on production boxes and see if we see performance improvement. So you, that's you can definitely you can definitely try it right now. I think it's in, in pretty stable state. Um, there's no, no, you know, huge risk or anything. So, um, yeah, yeah, if you can go for it, otherwise it would happen in with a release candidate sort of in about a month. So, yeah. That's awesome. Um, cool. Uh, out of curiosity, how are you measuring the performance? Like, uh, is it just completely internal and it's, 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 oh, no. yeah, here, let me share. I was working on something, but I can, so, so the main thing I use these days is a tool called hyperfine, which okay. makes it easy let me get this terminal make it a little smaller would help uh in the middle here so the neat thing about hyperfine it's nothing you can't do with time the big difference is you know like if i rerun this so this i've told it i want to test this variable called zeke which i'm giving it two strings and then i want it to template in this path and then basically run this command oops with two different versions of zeke and i i have like six versions of zeke but in this case, I'm just doing the two and you, you run this and it kind of does the templating for you. So it's going to generate that command. And the neat thing about this is you can do like, you know, multiple versions of Zeek and multiple PCAPs and it, there's a lot of neat features, but this is kind of the basic usage. You can see you run it and it will go and, you know, do the multiple runs. It gives you this little ETA, which is kind of useful and basically just makes the timing a little more sciency and a little less like oh, i ran it once and it seems to be faster you know you can you can run multiple multiple times it has a lot of a lot of useful features uh, it can also generate markdown which i found to be really useful when generating like a merge request or something because this output is nice for a terminal but obviously when you copy and paste this you lose all the colors and stuff like that so the right. markdown view is nice to paste into uh, like a GitHub issue or something. And yeah, and just another couple of, oh, my Zoom window is above it, uh, 20 more seconds. I was looking into figuring out how to get this to actually count down. 
because when you do much larger tests, it'll just be like ETA five minutes, and then it just stays at five minutes until it finishes. But, yeah, that would be useful if it can kind of say like tick tick down. Yeah, or, or even just give you an ETA. But yeah, I see at the end, so it did stats. You know, I did three runs, so there was a range. You could see on my laptop with Zoom doing screen sharing was not super consistent, but at least even with the range, you know, being off by 500 milliseconds and 300 milliseconds, it's still 15% faster, you know, plus or minus 0 0.05. Right. So it's it's a little better than using just, you know, you, there's nothing you couldn't do by just, you know, time this command and then time this command and then do the math. Where it's really nice is if you look at my history, yeah, I have commands like this <laughs> where I was testing, you know, one PCAP and you could see one, two, three, four, five, six different versions of Zeek. And this is the kind of thing you just run and come back in half an hour or whatever, and you have all your numbers. So, yeah. And yeah, I've, I've tested a whole bunch of PCAPs and, and at worst, it's the same speed. And at best, it's 15 to 25% faster. So, yeah, definitely interested to see uh, the kind of real world, you know, experience people have if they actually see CPU drop by 15, 20%. I'm sure there's some workloads that don't benefit as much from these changes. That's pretty awesome. Like, we keep an eye on, like, based on how we run our Zeek cluster, we still, like, performance is a pretty big deal for us. So just knowing this, that, running master can improve performance with 25% is amazing. I'm just going to go and hop off and ask Dob if we can run that on our um, best data center production and see if we can see an improvement because that will help a lot. Uh, and this is like a very um, surprise and pretty Christmas present. So thank you, Justin, for showing this. Pretty cool. Yeah, and, and definitely, I, I had absolutely nothing to do with any of this. It's definitely Arna that did all the work. I was just, I saw all those changes and I'm like, oh, let me see like what the actual impact is. And it was quite surprising. So definitely worth uh, noting this because, yeah, <clears throat> it's, it's, a, it's a pretty so, sizable improvement. Since, since we're looking at stuff like that, I can show something related. So Justin, if you want to yield, then I can... I can show you, Fatima, sort of how we do this um, in day-to-day -day work, where it actually sort of works similarly. Um, so let's see here. Oh, it's just, um, you know, um, so I hope you can see this. Um, so this is a Grafana dashboard, and it's an instance of how we can compare performance at this point for, you know, development work as it happens. So this is, I think, actually the PR in which Arnett you know, created a bunch of that performance improvement by throwing out stuff that was not needed. And every bar you see here is basically a performance comparison, a runtime com uh, com comparison between master and what is happening in that PR. Um, and every every bar is is a particular kind of um, micro or macro benchmark that is measuring sort of some aspect of, you know, the system. Um, and so we've had this for a while. We've just not yet figured out a way to make this visible in the PRs themselves because this sort of, you know, um, machinery that we're running behind the scenes, but we're sort of trying to figure out how we can make that a little bit more accessible. So we have much better ways now to track basically how performance evolves sort of as we as we do day-to-day -day development work, which is really nice. Um, that's it. I just wanted to show you sort of like, and, and, and um, the, the, the kinds of tests running here are very much like what you just did, Justin. It's just like running a PCAP and looking how much you know time it takes and and so forth. So so this is great. I'm pretty excited about this, and we'll sort of build that out going forward. That's pretty cool. Well, that's a really neat way <laughs> of keeping an eye on if a if a terrible PR can kind of like completely erase right. the performance, yeah. but it has like amazing features. But then if we optimize it, then how you know. It's like based on the, the appetite of performance hit. Um, yep. It's really relevant for spicy work right now. Um, it matters a lot there. So that little little test finished. So yeah, this is <laughs> hey, awesome. over the last one to you. I, I kind of haphazardly picked a bunch of versions, but it's most of the major versions four, five, five, one, six, six, one. And you could see six one was a little faster and then just drops, you know, all the way back down. So yeah. So comparing master to five is 26% faster. That's just crazy, right? I mean, if, especially if you have large sensors that might be getting, you know, 20 gigabit or more, 25% is 
five <laughs> extra gig of it that you can process. So, but yeah, this this is definitely kind of a synthetic test, at least. I mean, this is a, a PCAP of actual stuff that I generated. So it's something that kind of does occur and it's a good thing to make sure it doesn't get slower, but yeah, 26% faster is just nuts. So it's like yeah. almost a, a, a fourth, uh, a quarter person, person yeah. from his boost. That's amazing. Oh, I mean, I'm super happy now. Um, and, and curious at the same time that what changes did Arnie and people do to make it faster? I'm like, okay, maybe that here's the time to go back and check all the um, changes that were merged in master in past week or so to find out yeah. what exactly changed that is um, boosting the performance. So yeah, I had actually done that probably like eight years ago, something like that. I tested like, I tried compiling like every git commit, you know, going back quite a ways. And it was interesting. It actually did spot a regression or two where, you know, one commit just made stuff a little bit slower. Um, that just takes a lot of compiling, but doing all the major tags is a lot faster. Even on a pretty slow computer, you can compile, you know, a dozen versions of Zeek in, you know, under an hour and do this sort of test. And yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting how, how much faster things are getting. Awesome. Okay. Oh my God. I am, I'm mind blown. I can say that. I was super excited and now I'm even more excited for the new year. So I, I literally want to hop off the call and talk to Dov about maybe you want to pull the master branch. We do run master on the test every every night. Like we have nightly builds and then it just deploys it on our Zeke test, Zeke test sensors, but we only deploy the LTS release on our sensors. But uh, we might have compiled master already. That must be that might be running on test sensor. We just have to push it into production and see if we, um, if we see uh, performance boost there and how much CPU improvement we can see. So that's pretty cool. Wow. As I said, really, really nice, pleasant surprise Christmas present from the project team. So thank you so much. It's really insightful. And thank you for sharing um, Christian and Justin, all these performance stats and whatnot. So awesome. Awesome. Cool. Well, uh, I love the suggestion and feedback and people, how they're interacting. So uh, I'm very grateful. And um, with that, if anyone else have any other anecdotes that they want to share, could be personal, could be professional, could be anything. Actually, we're recording. So just be mindful that it is being recorded. <laughs> so just be careful. Oh, I don't, you know. Oh, okay. So if not, then um, I was just trying to think something that I can share about my, I was sick pretty much. I mean, my after Christmas, I there's some kind of viral and flu going on, and my whole household, my whole household is sick. So I'm recovering now. So that's why I don't have any good Christmas holiday stories. But hopefully, maybe in the next month or so, we will have more um, cool updates stories. But this was awesome. So once again, thank you all, and I'll see you guys next month. Thank you, and take care. Thanks all. Bye. Bye.